If you're a returning viewer, you're probably thinking, hey, at what point did Courtney stop talking about IB art? Because that used to be her entire personality. And if you're a new viewer, you're probably thinking, who is this woman and what is IB art? Hi, I'm Courtney, a young artist, and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about art, travel, life, you name it. But today, obviously, this video is about IB art. We are going to go through my sketchbook, the pieces that I submitted, some of my tips, and then we're going to see the score that came out. Quick little reminder that I am a small YouTuber and trying to make my way in the world, so it would be really appreciated if you end up liking this video to like it or subscribe to my channel, and thanks for the support. This video is going to be divided up into a few different sections, so that will all be like available for you to skip through both in the description and as just like a sections feature on YouTube. I am going to be doing an entire IB art sketchbook tour, so if that's something you want to see, it is going to be a bit of a longer video. So get some water, get a snack, sit down. And if that's not, you can totally skip through to my artworks or my scores at the end. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead with it. I think that first off, it's probably a good idea for me to tell what IB art is. If you're not somebody who is considering IB or taking it and you're just kind of watching this video for fun, IB art is sort of like the equivalent of AP art, except IB or International Baccalaureate is an entire program if you're doing the diploma program which is like the highest level of ib and basically you go through the program with all of these higher level classes and the main difference between ap and ib is an ib since it's an all-inclusive dedicated program there's a lot more like papers and projects you have to do if you've seen my channel before my youth service project youth and art initiative was part of ib for my cast project creativity, action, and service. And then IB art is just one of those classes that you can take. Unlike a lot of AP art classes where it's like AP 2D art, AP 3D art, I think that those are things. IB art, you kind of just explore everything and you have the ability to create pretty much any type of visual art that you want in the end for your exhibition. Now there are some other facets of IB art, which is your process portfolio, which is basically choosing a couple pages out of your sketchbook and then sending them off for IB to look at and say, hey, is your process good? Did you like write good about this in your sketchbook? And then the other part is your comparative study, which basically if you're in the higher level version of IB art means that you have to compare at least three artists and artworks, but in the higher level, you also have to make an artwork inspired by those pieces. I won't be showing those today because this video would be millions of years long, but if you wanna see it, comment. And at the end of the video, I will talk about how those also factored into my scores. So the main premise of this sketchbook is that every piece that you created in IB art, you kind of write about your process, how you created it. And then there's also just some like general reflection in here. We're going to kind of like move a little quickly because there's a lot in here, obviously. <laughs> but if you really want to see like an entire page I skipped over, obviously just pause and rewind but yeah hope you guys like it and we're going on to that sketchbook it says this is 2021 to 2023 so hello welcome to my sketchbook and we're just about to go through this entire journey here is where i kept all of the feedback that my teacher gave me i love her because she really helped me grow a lot all of these were for like different specific pages, but I just kept them all in the beginning. So here at the beginning, our task was kind of just to fill out 20 pages. That was like a pre year thing. And we just kind of did a lot of things. This was a museum visit where I talked about things, artists I love. Here are just some random sketches of stuff that I found trying to fill up some pages, a lot of stamps. I love how experimental I was able to be here in the beginning. This is still one of my favorite pages in the sketchbook just because I love Brokeback Mountain. And that was a really cute sketch. Yeah, anyways. I was just experimenting with a couple of different themes that I might have wanted to 
later explore in my work and then drawing a lot of the things that I saw on vacation as well. I'm telling you, I keep just finding random like little sentimental objects in here that I stashed. And now we're getting into the section where I actually had to start doing work again. So here is the like where I wrote down all of the elements and principles of art. I just made like little fun pages to tell me about that. This one was for lines. This is supposed to be right here, but it fell out. It's like a dried fern. One of the things I love about IB art is that you can kind of just do whatever you want on your pages. It's really cute as long as you're following, you know, what they want to see in the end. So shapes, colors, stay in the book, value, and texture. I really like this one. I wish that I could have like put more. There's literally some hair under a piece of tape here. My IB art class was like hilarious. Space, form, and one of the things that you'll really see once you get all the way through this book with me is you will notice that I got a lot better at formatting these pages, which sort of like helped me with design in the end, which I think is really funny. Contrast, I started incorporating some of my own art into these pages to see where I had like done things subconsciously like I already knew these concepts and here was contrast between the red of the background and the graphite in this piece and then just balance between the skull and the flowers over here. Unity too I put my little like jeans that I used to make. I was really big on making custom jeans in sophomore and junior year. Movement, emphasis, <laughs> pattern. Oh my god these are principles of design by the way not principles of art apparently and then rhythm and that is the last principles page because now we're moving into my medium pages this was for graphite i put a couple little drawings that i had made down here and also just explained what graphite is the ranges of graphite it was just basically to research a new medium and figure out what you liked about it what you didn't you know things like that and then here is the planning of my piece is making a piece for my state fair and this is the process you will see in the beginning i tried to keep the process pages very simple this is clearly not my entire process but as we go through the book it gets a lot easier then we reflect on our drawings every time too um this page kind of transferred over a little bit because here's my charcoal research page and i was planning to draw michael myers this is what I mean where in the beginning of this book I didn't really have a lot of good ideas even though I had technical skill as you can see here like it's clearly very well technically drawn. I was not good at coming up with my own ideas and I was kind of jealous of these artists that I would find on my artist pages whose works conveyed like such a deep story so that's something that we get into a little later. Um, Kathy Cole, it's another one. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but her work just has such like it speaks to you and it has such a story, even though it is a little more messy and out there, you know. The first year we really were experimenting with a bunch of different mediums because here is photo and you'll notice that all of my things in the first year are sort of different interpretations of mediums and stuff. Some artists that I researched and then this one. I only did this once. I had like a paper that comes out. I don't really like that. I don't know if you can even see it all on the camera because you're up there. But yeah, this was basically my process for creating a photogram. No, no, a pinhole photograph. But it, this was one of the field photos that came out a little white, lighter. And then this was the final, or at least a copy of the final and I liked it. There was some digital photography where I included pieces that I had done throughout the years, and then I worked on a set of weird little digital creatures to fulfill my digital thing. So this one is When Cows Can Fly. Oh, this is weird. I accidentally like put the reflection pages for the rest of it a lot later. So 
here is the process for the next page in my digital series, which was Watchdog. And then the last one was Hunters, which was this really cool piece. I like it a lot. I just wish that it was a little higher quality. And here, because I skipped a few pages, this was a photogram I made, which I actually really loved. Like this turned out really well. I have the actual original copy of the photogram here. And I keep it in here because I actually really just, ugh. It's so beautiful. I don't know what really attaches me to this. I think that it's like grow up and I wasn't really knowledgeable on how photograms even worked at the time, but I really loved how it worked out. You can see the difference between this other version, which I made before the final. And this is the final. I think the only thing that I ended up liking more in this version was it was a little more sharp. This one is a bit less sharp for whatever reason, but there's also a lot of empty space here. So this worked out pretty good, I would say. Past all of that digital I already showed you. Here we are, Arena Plexina maybe, <laughs> a Russian oil pastel artist because we were getting into pastels. And then Edgar Degas, classic. Here we have my oil pastels research page. This one also included some of my old art, but it was a little lazy. And here's my oil pastel drawing where I was trying to, trying to make like a scary creature type thing. I didn't really love this piece because I wasn't super experienced in oil pastels. And also the composition was not great because all of the horns are going off screen. But there's my soft pastel page. And I like the soft pastel piece a lot. It was very simple. It didn't really have like a deep idea or anything, but the piece is actually sitting in front of me right now, which is funny. And then here's collage. I really loved the way that my collage piece turned out. It was about war and the effects of war. And like in the middle is like a mother. And I called it a mother's wrath because it's about like, how war has affected people, including like families, whatever. Yeah, this was sort of the phase where I was starting to like get deeper into my ideas. I was exploring what I wanted to do for my exhibition, you know. Another collage artist here that I found, I think on Instagram. And then we're getting into linoleum print, which I think this was one of my best ideas. The execution was not amazing, but what I love about this era of my creating art, I cared a little bit less about the execution and a little bit more about just like the creation of it. And that was so awesome. Like I loved doing that. So we have this super cool like skull that says judgment. And this was very inspired by Red Dead, if you can't tell. And then I just love this cowboy on the Course. like riding into the sunset type beat that was crazy i made so many iterations of this and it was so hard to come out with a result that i actually really loved look at all of these like there were so many and i came to this in the end i didn't feel like it was like everything i wanted it to be but that was still like oh it was so good i had so much fun making these and then this was a really talented um, lino artist. Sculpture! This is one of my favorites. I don't know if you can see it. And it's kind of falling apart because here is the finger in that piece. Um, I have my middle finger cake that I created over here. Originally I was just going for like a regular hand and then I was like, why not make a middle finger? And it became a whole thing. Um, the cake is right here. It is falling apart. And you've probably seen it before um i don't know what it is about that clay it's just so fragile it was like that crayola clay i think it was so fragile and i've had to redo that thing multiple times so this was the first iteration of it which is nothing what it looks like what i just showed you now and i'll tell you why eventually and this is where i started going in really deep on these pages um, and my ideas, they were just getting so good because I was able to explore more of what I wanted to, like things like that. There was just so much that I was doing. I really like enjoyed this era and I finished it. Clearly it's not as detailed as what I just showed you, but it's cute and we're leaving it at that. I love this artist, this little dog, cutest thing ever. Oh my God. And then oil painting. Oil painting prior to IB art, oil painting was like my entire thing. That's like all that I did. 
but my oil painting for IB Art did not turn out great at all. I started going and I actually was using some really cheap oil paints that I had gotten as a gift from somebody and I did not like them at all and instead of redoing the piece like with actual nice oil paints and going over the whole thing, I literally just switched and I did watercolor and it was not really a great piece. I wasn't super proud of this one, but it was there. And then my acrylic paint, I also wasn't super proud of, which I think is hilarious because painting was my entire thing. Like I was really struggling with all the drawing we had to keep doing and both of my paintings didn't turn out like incredible. I don't know, it was, it was wild. Accidental blank page beautiful her paintings are amazing and then colored pencil research some planning for this next piece i really loved how the ideas from my exhibition were kind of sort of sort of starting to develop here i loved the sketch on this one it was beautiful but the end result was pretty cool too just like the texture of it all Ugh. the only thing that i wish was a little bit different is this hand right here like that is how the hand looks in the reference picture but it just looks so weird and unnatural like it's not a normal position for a hand to be in like i'm still trying to figure out what the reference's hand was doing i think it's like something like that but beautiful piece. Ugh, I just love it. I just love it. Um, Ellie Smallwood, literally like one of my favorite artists of all time. She is amazing, amazing. Then planning for this next piece, which was mixed feelings because it's like a really cool piece. The realism is amazing, but the composition was just struggling a little bit, I think. Like this was one of my more realistic pieces though alcohol markers did some research on it because i did use alcohol markers in this piece and then tom this long champ marker artist and then this was the end of my junior year oh my god this is so exciting because that means that we are moving into my senior year which is where i started creating my IB art exhibition acts of rebellion you can see here that i put my three most favorite pieces which was birthday from hell the sculpture just curious my photogram and no, grow up the photogram and just curious which was this piece that was on the pages before. Just a little reflection and then planning for my exhibition Acts of Rebellion. Yes. I wanted to make a politically charged piece and even though this was literally the first piece I made for my exhibition, it's still one of my favorites, I did start moving into making a bit more provocative work. You know, if I had a bleep, then would you care what I wear? Yeah, this just came out so good. I love it. It is such a beautiful piece. I want to make posters out of it. I just don't know if anyone would buy them, but I totally would if somebody else had made that. And then here's where I just researched like a bunch of artists. Ryan Humphrey was like awesome because he's actually with a pencil in hand, which is an artist page on Instagram and I love his work. Ugh. I also love the way that this like pen just like blended into the oil pastel I was using. I don't know, that's beautiful. <laughs> Here we go, starting thinking about exhibition pieces. I ended up making Nukamal, which was like a little Barbie type sculpture. I did not make vulture culture culture vulture because I don't know. I think that it would have been a really cool piece, but I just don't think that I was the sort of person to make it dinner would have been very cool still want to make that never ended up making it i made fragile confines of beauty though and i made ornamentation but it did not end up being piece in my exhibition so here i was planning for like this robot piece this was actually the least favorite piece to make it into my exhibition and it wasn't because of this front piece it was because of the background like i did not really like the letters in the background as much as I thought I would because they weren't exactly like symmetrical all the way down but it was still like great this photography piece that I'm having here um any piece that you see with this yellow tag on it by the way is something that I wanted to put into my process portfolio so if you see a bunch of yellow tags that's why I made this piece about animal exploitation and it did not end up making it into my exhibition. There were a lot of pieces I planned and even some that I created that did not actually make it into my exhibition because 
I'd literally made them and then I would line them all up together and one just looked so glaringly out of place like this one. So did not make the cut. To put that into the narrative, the whole thing, whatever. And then the reflection on that. And then we have planning for Nuke Them All Up. Nuke Them All Up was an interesting piece because it was basically just meant to be like a satirical take on American culture, which is funny now that the Barbie movie is out because I used a Barbie for this piece and I actually made some criticisms on Barbie based on that. But I did start out sculpting the entire thing by myself and I did not like how it was looking. It ended up looking so bad and again I was using the same clay that I used for that birthday cake and it was just so ugh it was so bad. I don't know what it was. It just like kept breaking. And then even worse, to try to stop it from breaking, I covered it in like this resin and I didn't realize the resin was waterproof. So then I could not even paint over it with my acrylics. So I just completely scrapped that. I started working on this Barbie and I also ripped the head off of a Cinderella Barbie and I used her. I do feel kind of bad about it. Like that was really sad, but honestly it worked out. And this is like probably one of my favorite pieces from that exhibition, like hands down, that was amazing. Like I almost want to just like fully delve into sculpture in college because sculpture, I don't know, like I feel like even though it's not my favorite medium to work in sculpture, it's just- Oh my God, y'all, my phone ran out of storage, speed run, so planning for this and then this was just called scissors beats rocks you guys can pause if you want to read any of this i'm just trying to go before the storage runs out again because this is a massive video comparative study planning all of that and then this was the piece that i made inspired by my comparative study just a bunch of papers <laughs> and then planning for a piece about marriage and divorce that was fun. And then I started planning this and it was my birthday from hell piece, but I never finished that page. I just basically redid it. And then here is my short film, which was awesome. And you can actually watch this on YouTube if you want to. Then that is the end of my sketchbook. Now we're going to move on to the section where I show you guys all of the pieces that actually made it into my exhibition, their descriptions, all of that. You can pause if you want to read each one and basically it'll just tell you what was in my exhibition and what was like actually graded for the exhibition portion of the grade. So we're finally here. You have completed looking at the sketchbook, completed looking at my work. We're here and we are about to see the score. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up on my computer for you guys so that you get like the same vibe that I had whenever I first looked at my scores. And basically what it shows you once you get on the website is all of the courses you took and a question mark beside it. And then at the very bottom, if you did the diploma program, it will have result right here. And that was so nerve wracking. I didn't know if I wanted to reveal them all at once or not, but whatever. We're looking at visual art today. I did end up getting my diploma. I mean, I already know all this stuff. I looked at it like a month ago, but I figured I would just like show you guys. But it was really hard. It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And most of the exams this year, like we did not get any leniency for COVID. So it was a time. It was definitely a time. What did I get? Drum roll, please. A five, a very high five. Had me feeling a little bit of some type of way, but you know, 
And obviously, I want to just go ahead and say the value of your art cannot be defined by a number or a score or even a price. It is something that is incredibly personal to you and once your art is out in the world you cannot control how people react to it, what people think of it, any of that. And that's just something that I've had to learn in my time applying for exhibitions etc and just like having nothing come back or now where I didn't get like a score that I loved. But anyways a uh, five is more than a passing grade. A passing grade is a four. Um, and basically we have the grade boundaries, which is like what you had to be to get into the five. For people that took AP, um, for context, IB scores go from one to seven. Um, if this was AP, I would not be complaining about a five. I will just tell you that. But I got a five and then my total moderated mark, moderated is the key word, was a 63. For a five, the lower grade boundary is a 53 and the upper grade boundary is a 65. So to increase to a six, I only needed three points. Yeah. Most of my IB exams were really, really close to increasing, which is a bit frustrating because since I chose to go to like a more prestigious private college, uh, that college is not going to accept scores of four, five, six, or seven for IB credit. They're only accepting sixes and sevens. So it was a little frustrating, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I think that I got this mark and some of the circumstances surrounding this year. So the past two years that IB exams have come out, there has been some leniency for COVID. Actually, I think it was the past three years, the past three years, oh my God. There has been some leniency for COVID, whether that was like the first year literally only using the IAs, which are like the papers that you write to score your entire portfolio of IB stuff. Or in more recent years, just taking out a couple of the parts of the exams that maybe you wouldn't have had time to prepare for. This year, however, despite the fact that my generation was certainly impacted by COVID, freshman year, sophomore year, and a little bit of junior year, considering that was totally not a normal year at all. We actually did not get any COVID leniency and the grade boundaries went back to what they were practically in 2019. So even though IB is kind of a four-year program because you do have to take, at least in my case, prerequisites the freshman and sophomore year before you actually do the two-year real IB program, and we were certainly affected in the first like two years of the four years, there was really not any leniency, which I don't think it's surprising that scores were lower than 2019, even though the grade boundaries were kind of the same as then because we have been really affected by that. Not saying that like we should have had everything handed to us, obviously, and I really do think that like, I maybe could have studied or put a tiny bit more effort into my exams, but the whole of it is whenever you're in a program that's like so academically challenging like IB, you're probably also pairing that with a lot of extracurriculars outside things because you want to get into a good college most of the time and that's what I was doing. So I was doing the most that I could while also, you know, getting into a good college and I did end up doing that. So. I'm not mad at all. <laughs> and I think the reason why I got the 63 now, that is a combination of the score that I got on my exhibition, which was all of the pieces I showed you, the score that I got on my process portfolio, which I chose a few specific pages, like I think it was like up to 20 slides, something like that, out of this sketchbook that I really liked and thought like showcased my process well, turned that in, and then also my comparative study went into this score. I did talk with my art teacher and she felt that I deserved a higher score than this, which means that moderation probably came into play. So in IB, for some parts of your class, your teacher grades the thing that you're doing, which is your IA. IA stands for internal assessment. Probably should have cleared that up early on. And your teacher grades that. And then there's other parts of your exam which are graded by IB, like the actual IB people. But even the part that your teacher grades can still be moderated. 
by IB, which the way that I have heard that they do it. Normally when they're moderating, they take one of the lowest scoring exams and then one of the highest scoring exams and then one in the middle. And then they kind of like look at all of those and see if they feel like the teacher graded everybody higher than they needed to be, graded them lower than they needed to be. And then as a result of literally just those three papers, knocks them down, knocks pretty much all of them down. This is not me bagging on IB and that is not me saying that it's what happens every single time because it totally may be differences where you are, but that is what I found to be most true. And I feel that that is what may have happened with me because so close to the next grade boundary, I don't know. But also one of the things that I don't really like about IB is I can't go into my grade to see how much of it was made up of the process portfolio or how much of it was my exhibition. I am just given a score of 63 and I will never know which one I did not as great on, which one I did amazing on. You know, there are some other classes in which I know what my teacher graded me on my IA so I can sort of like assume what I got on the exam but this is not one of those so yeah those are the results. I'm sorry if they're a little bit underwhelming by the way. This was a long video and to end on a not so amazing note may not seem the greatest. I do want to have a quick discussion though in that like I was sort of mentioning earlier the scores that you get on an assignment or how much someone prices your art or if it gets into an exhibition, all of that, none of it defines the kind of art that you make. None of it defines how good that art is. And this may sound cliche, but I'm living proof of it on my IB exam. I may not have gotten like a good score that I thought I wanted to, which really doesn't even matter because to me a good score would have been a six and I was three points away from that so. But at the end of the day I am still attending a really great college for art on a full tuition scholarship. I know that it's different in other countries but at least in the US what you do on your IB exams really does not matter for a lot other than college credit. You're not being accepted into colleges based on your IB scores, unlike how it is in a lot of Europe and places like that, but I feel sorry for you guys. Sorry about that. But here, colleges are a lot more holistic, which can be a good thing and a bad thing, because while colleges being a lot more holistic does mean that you can be rejected with a perfect ACT and SAT score, it also means that you can be accepted because they really liked something that you did with an extracurricular. And then just some general tips for IB art that I feel like really would have helped me in the beginning. One, it's okay not to have everything figured out. At the beginning of IB art, I knew that I was like good technically, but my ideas were just very lacking. And I think that that's something that IB art helps you develop like the most. Your idea process, the type of work that you want to create, I personally didn't get as much technical development, so my art doesn't actually look technically better as much as I did idea development, so the storyline and narrative of a lot of my pieces works better now. So don't be afraid if you're going into a junior year and you have no idea what you want to do. The first year for me was more exploratory, the way that my teacher set it up, so we got to explore pastels, colored pencils, paint, all of that. And then the second year was when we actually worked on our exhibition and we had a lot more direction by then. Second thing I want to say is do not take your sketchbook for granted. There were some days where I just did not even want to finish a page and I knew that it was for a grade and I did it anyways. But now I have this amazing, big, beautiful book, which is basically me documenting my art journey for the past two years, which I think is so beautiful. That is amazing that I can just see myself growing as I flip through this book. And as someone who didn't normally really keep a sketchbook before, it's just a great opportunity to sort of like document your growth, document your process. I think the last thing that I want to say about IB art is that even though IB classes are college classes and they generally prepare you really well for college, which I can certainly say it was for me. So 
IB was certainly worth it for me, but. IB art is something that is a little bit weird because it sits in that strange category of art being so subjective that it's difficult to put a number on, difficult to grade, difficult to interpret, you know what I mean? You may not succeed in IB art and then do great in art school, or it could be the opposite. Everything I've already been saying about art being subjective, it's totally true. Learn all that you can while you are here in IB art and recognize that you're not an expert yet. And there are some things you're going to need to know in college and even further down the line. I don't think that becoming a good artist is a destination that you arrive at, but rather like a journey and there's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs. But you eventually sort of get to a place where you're mostly up and that average is better than nothing, right? I just want to leave you with one last thing before I go. There's something beautiful about looking through my book and seeing all of the little knickknacks that I stashed in there. I have a map of the National Gallery of Art in here from my time in BC and then also Lori Anderson's The Weather. That exhibition was insane. I also saw it during my time in DC. I have a bunch of these little projector slide things that I made in order to create my art, which is just so fun to look back on. And then even just random sketches in my book that I never did anything with. It's just very heartwarming to look back and know that I have all of this waiting in here for me whenever I get a little reminiscent or nostalgic. But yeah, all in all, I totally do recommend IB art and it really helped me grow as an artist. A number does not define you and regardless of the score that I got or that you will get, and I think that it is an amazing program nevertheless. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions, if you want to learn more, I will totally answer all of those in the comments. And then you're also hoping to boost my video, which really appreciate that. But anyways, I hope you have a happy day, a happy life, and you keep on creating. Bye!